Hey there, I'm Lucas Bond with the Missouri Department of Conservation. And today on Habitat Hints, we're gonna be talking edge feathering. Why do we do it? Why is it good for the environment and so much more? I'm gonna be joined by private lands conservationist, Corey Gregg, and Corey's gonna tell us what we ought to know about edge feathering. Let me turn this around and we'll talk with Corey. All right, Corey, so we're talking edge feathering. Tell us, you know, what is edge feathering first? and why it's important for the environment and how it helps uh, helps the land. Yeah, so edge feathering is basically it's a brush pile, a glorified name for a brush pile. And the reason we're doing edge feathering is kind of creating some uh, escape cover for small game. So rabbits, quail, other small critters out there that uh, just need some escape cover. Uh, they like open environments, but they need somewhere to get away from uh, predators. So we're just kind of picking on some trees right here on the edge of the woods usually, or even in fence rows. And uh, cedar trees are really good for it, but you can see this one is primarily hardwoods, but uh, we want to make them large enough that predators just can't sit on them. If you make them too small, a predator can sit there and watch the game go in and then also chase it, if it as it comes out or could penetrate and get in there. So what we wanna do is we wanna usually create these at least 30 foot by 50 foot. Um, we don't want them too high, you know, more than 12 foot high usually. And the reason for that is we don't want hawks and owls, uh, different types of aerial predators to sit there and just hone in on those small prey. So um, keeping them low profile, but you can see, you know, you, you want it thick enough that that small game can get in there, but that larger game that's chasing them, those predators, can't penetrate it. So that's kind of the game plan uh, in creating these. So, and, and it's awesome to have them set by like areas like this, right? So over on this side, you have, you have the edge feathering done, given mm -hmm. the options for habitat to come in and hide from mm -hmm. predators while you actually have an open field yeah. for a great habitat, right? Yeah, so if you've done some uh, in this case, savanna restoration, where you've got a lot of open ground, they burn it on a fairly regular basis, a lot of broad leaves in here, so there's a lot of food source. So great habitat here, and then on the other side, we've done some timber stand improvement and some burning too, so there's still a lot of open ground. So there's just a really good habitat um, surrounding it, and this just gives them that hard escape cover um, just in the mix to create that diversity that they need. Where can we learn more about timber, uh, about not timber stand improvement, but edge feathering? Yes, yeah, so uh, we have private lands conservationists and uh, foresters in every county. So you can get online and find out who your uh, local conservationist is. And, uh, and then we have information online just about edge feathering in general. If you just go on there and search edge feathering, you should be able to find it. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, Corey. Again, I'm gonna echo what he said. If you'd like to learn more about edge feathering and and find your local private lands conservationist i'd encourage you to get on our website at mdc.mo.gov and in the search bar type in private lands conservationist or type in edge feathering to get more information or to find your local contact thanks for joining us today you all have a great rest of the day